Now let's bring uh, everything together to see how drug is distributed in uh, human body type. So we look at very primitive. So again, you have drug coming at administration site. It can be IV. It can be oral. It can be any other way. Then it comes to blood and distributes between different compartments. The simplest way just going into tissue, but in fact there are plenty of compartments. And uh, are then it's eliminated mostly by renal elimination, but not only. So the resulting curve will have always have such a shape. Concentration is zero at moment of drug introduction. Then we'll go to maximum and then slowly will decay. Now this shape is very general. It always shows up in any way of drug or poison introduction. Now essentially this is what we have when we have first order consecutive process. So we have first order reaction of introduction, drug absorption, and then another first order reaction of drug elimination. This uh, was studied in detail in physical chemistry, uh, but otherwise it's very general approach. This curve serves as background for bioavailability determination. So we take a concentration curve after IV injection when we assume that 100% of um, our drug or well poison, if you want, uh, was directly developed into bloodstream. And another curve is of oral or actually any other ways uh, other than IV. Then you take area under this curve and divide by area under a larger curve of IV injection. Reality is slightly more complicated, uh, when, especially when we talk about oral administration. Bioavailability and concentration curves are different for different uh, regimes of admission. So, for example, this is more or less routine experimental curve for administration of antibiotic after fasting. Surprisingly, meal enhances the concentration, but if you add milk, that will keep your antibiotic inside small particles of fat or absorbed your drug on alumina gel, by availability drops down several times. It's just dramatic difference how taking the same antibiotic with cup of milk or without cup of milk. Different forms of uh, same chemical will result in different bioavailabilities. Say potassium salt is much better than calcium salt, is much better than acidic form, and in turn it's better than sodium. It can be different solid form 
that changes by availability. Say we have, in this example, we have two polymorphs of crystalline chloramphenicol palmitate, which is antibiotic useful for treatment of number of bacterial infections. Now, solubility of these two solid polymorphs, so just the same chemical compound, uh, different packing in a crystal. The solubility is different. As a result, you have different bioavailability. Uh, you have lots of polymer B, absorption is several times better. So, the very fact that you have same chemical in your prescription drug or in any chemical formulation uh, does not mean that you'll have the same concentration in bloodstream. Same is true for illegal drugs, of course. So, uh, that's a picture for cocaine bioavailability, if taken oral, or same cocaine with alcohol. Bioavailability is much higher. You have much higher concentration of cocaine in bloodstream. Uh, now, uh, the metabolism is different as well. So, benzoylecognine, that is metabolite of cocaine, appears at different time and stays for much longer time if there is ethanol. Some uh, drugs are intentionally taken in form that needs to be metabolized. So, when we are looking at concentration of acetyl salicylic acid in plasma, we are actually not much interested in this amount because active compound is salicylic acid itself, which is a result of metabolism. So, you have aspirin disappearing from bloodstream, but you have salicylic acid staying for a long time. And this is what you want to stay, because this is an active pharmaceutical ingredient. The reason you are taking aspirin and not salicylic acid itself is... Uh, uh, that uh, salicylic acid is way too acidic than we want and it can harm your stomach first and then transportation of acetyl salicylic acid from stomach to bloodstream is much better. 